Today's lecture is on electromagnetic radiation and particulate radiation. Let's look at the objectives for today. After today's lecture, students will know about electromagnetic radiation. Students will learn to describe the wave-like and particle-like characteristics of electromagnetic radiation. We shall explain wave-particle duality, explain attenuation, and list the quantities describing electromagnetic waves. Students will also be able to identify parts of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum and explain ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. We shall also learn about particulate radiation and identify different particles, their characteristics and uses. Electromagnetic radiation can behave as either waves or particles. This is called the wave-particle duality. It exhibits wave-like characteristics at lower energies where the frequency is low and wavelength is long. It exhibits particle-like characteristics at higher energies where frequencies are higher and wavelengths are short. It can also have wave-like characteristics at these higher energies. We shall look at the wave-like characteristics next. Electromagnetic waves are transverse waves that travel at a speed of 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second in vacuum. This is the speed of light. They are not deflected in electric or magnetic fields because they have no charge. They are massless and travel in straight lines. Waves are characterized by the following quantities, amplitude, wavelength, frequency, period, and phase shift or phase difference. Let's start off by looking at each quantity individually. Amplitude is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. Wavelength is the distance from one peak of the wave to the next peak. Frequency is the number of cycles in one second. So if you think of this as one cycle, and if this time is one second, then the frequency is one cycle per second. If the time here is half a second, then there will be two cycles in one second. So the frequency will be two per second. The period is the time it takes to make one complete cycle. And the phase shift or phase difference is the angle between two waves. So here we have a sine wave and a cosine wave. The two waves are shifted by 90 degrees. So there's a phase shift or phase difference of 90 degrees between these two waves. If you imagine grabbing the sine wave at this point here and dragging it so it lines up with the cosine wave, the angle that it covers is 90 degrees. So the phase shift is 90 degrees. Now let's look at speed. The speed of a wave is given by the wavelength lambda divided by the period t. We can also replace the inverse period by the frequency so that we shall have c equals lambda multiplied by frequency. c in this case is the speed of light because we are talking about electromagnetic waves. If we are talking about ultrasound waves, then c will be the speed of ultrasound in a medium or in some other material. Electromagnetic wave interactions with matter involve scatter, which is a change in direction or trajectory, and absorption, which involves the removal of radiation. Let's look at how various portions of the electromagnetic spectrum scatter. Radio frequency portion can scatter around large objects like buildings and mountains. The visible portion can scatter from materials where the amount of scattering depends on the type of surface. The X-ray portion can scatter from materials in a process called Compton scattering, which we shall learn about later. Electromagnetic waves can also be reflected, refracted, and transmitted. Let's start by looking at reflection on the next slide. There are two types of reflection. Specular reflection is reflection from a smooth surface and follows the law of reflection. The law of reflection tells us the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. An example of specular reflection is from a glassy surface. A diagram of specular reflection is on the left. Diffuse reflection is reflection from an uneven or rough surface. The right figure explains how diffuse reflection works. In diffuse reflection, most of the reflection is from a scattering center beneath the surface of a material. In diffuse reflection, the law of reflection is not obeyed. Incident light is reflected at multiple angles. An example is reflection from a frosted glass surface. We shall see later how reflection is important for ultrasound imaging. Refraction is the change in direction of a wave as it goes from one medium to another. This change is due to changes in the speed of the wave in a medium. Refraction can be explained by Snell's law. 
Snell's law describes the relationship between the angles of incidence and refraction, as well as the refractive indices of the media involved. We shall later learn how refraction is important for ultrasound imaging. Electromagnetic waves can be transmitted through a medium or they can be attenuated. On a clear day, visible light is transmitted easily through the atmosphere. On a cloudy day, the light is partly attenuated as it travels through the clouds. This process happens at different levels for other electromagnetic waves like infrared radiation, ultraviolet, radio waves, and gamma rays. We shall look at the process of attenuation next. Attenuation is when an electromagnetic beam is scattered and or absorbed. The extent of attenuation depends on the attenuating properties of the medium through which the electromagnetic wave is propagating. Different media have different attenuation coefficients. Now let's look at the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum can be divided into various sections. Wave-like properties can explain behaviors in the lower energy end, and particle-like properties are used to explain behaviors in the higher energy end. In the spectrum displayed, when going from left to right, the energy increases and the wavelengths get shorter. So for example, radio, TV, and microwaves near the left end have longer wavelengths and lower energy compared to X-rays and gamma rays on the right end of the spectrum. We can also split the electromagnetic spectrum into ionizing and non-ionizing portions as shown in the figure. Going from radio, TV, and microwaves all the way to the visible portion, we have non-ionizing radiation, while starting in the UV portion and going to the right, we have ionizing radiation. We shall learn more about these shortly. Now let's look at particle-like characteristics of electromagnetic radiation. In the higher energy portion, the electromagnetic spectrum is characterized by discrete particle-like bundles of energy called photons. These photons have energy E, speed C, and wavelength lambda. These quantities are related by the formula E equals HC over lambda, where H is called the Planck constant, and this quantity is a very small quantity which recognizes the particle-like nature of electromagnetic radiation. Particle-like characteristics of electromagnetic radiation are important in medical imaging. Most of medical imaging involves the higher energy end of the electromagnetic spectrum where particle-like properties are prevalent. Examples of radiation in the higher energy portion of the electromagnetic spectrum is X-rays and gamma rays. Electromagnetic radiation in the form of photons can be attenuated, where attenuation is a combination of scattering and absorption. We shall later learn about the mechanisms of scattering and absorption. Electromagnetic radiation can be transformed at higher energies in a process called pair production. In pair production, a pair of annihilation electrons are transformed into two photons that are emitted at about 180 degrees apart. This is used in positron emission tomography imaging and it's explained by E equals mc squared, which is Einstein's famous equation. I mentioned earlier that the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation can be broadly divided into ionizing radiation portion and a non-ionizing radiation portion. Let's look at the ionizing portion on the next slide. The electromagnetic spectrum starts to become ionizing in the UV region and continues through X-rays and gamma rays. Ionizing radiation has enough energy to strip electrons from atoms to form a positive ion and a free electron. The threshold for ionization is energy greater than 10 electron volts. In some books, you may see the threshold as 13.6 electron volts, which is the energy needed to remove an electron from a hydrogen atom. The X-ray and gamma ray portions have more energy than the UV portion and can cause more ionization and also DNA damage. Gamma rays and X-rays are useful for medical imaging. The UV portion can cause skin burns. The ionizing radiation portion shares the same characteristics as the other electromagnetic radiations. X-rays and gamma rays in the ionizing spectrum have very short wavelengths or high frequencies. They also have very high penetrating power. They are not affected at all by a magnetic field. X-rays and gamma rays also move at the speed of light and are massless. Gamma rays are the same as X-rays except for their origin. Gamma rays originate in the nucleus, X-rays originate outside the nucleus. The non-ionizing portion is characterized by low energy electromagnetic waves that cannot strip electrons from atoms. Examples are radio waves, 
Terra waves, and microwaves. Infrared and visible portions are part of the non-ionizing spectrum. Infrared radiation is emitted by warm and hot bodies and when absorbed causes heating. We are done with electromagnetic radiation and we shall now turn our attention to particulate radiation. Particulate radiation consists of light or low mass particles, heavy charged particles, and uncharged heavy particles like neutrons and light particles like neutrinos. Examples of low mass particles are beta minus particles which are like electrons and beta plus particles like positrons. We can look at the beta minus particles next. Beta minus particles are high energy electrons that are less penetrating than photons. They can move at very high speed and are deflected considerably by a magnetic field. They are negatively charged. Beta minus is important for iodine-131 therapy because of high energy beta radiation. In iodine-131 therapy, the patient ingests radioactive iodine in a capsule form or in a drink. Because the thyroid needs iodine to work, the radioactive iodine is absorbed in the thyroid. The beta minus radiation from the iodine destroys both cancerous and normal thyroid cells. Beta plus particles are high speed electrons just like beta minus particles. They are less penetrating than photons and also move at very high speeds. Beta plus particles are deflected strongly by a magnetic field, but because they are positively charged, the deflection is opposite to the direction of beta minus particles. They can be transformed at higher energies in an annihilation reaction to form two collinear photons in what is called positron annihilation. Beta plus particles can travel a short distance before combining with an electron to undergo annihilation. This is a reaction that is useful for positron emission tomography or PET imaging. There are a few beta plus emitting elements. These are fluorine 18, rubidium 82, yttrium 90, and oxygen 15. Let's look next at heavy charged particles. Examples of heavy charged particles are protons, alpha particles, or the helium nucleus, and carbon ions. Let's look at each next. Protons are positively charged heavy particles. The hydrogen nucleus is a proton. Protons are used in cancer therapy. The advantage of using protons over other external beams like electrons and X-rays is that protons deposit most of their dose over a narrow range of depth called the Bragg peak. This results in maximum radiation to a tumor in that location and less radiation to nearby healthy tissues. Another charged particle is the carbon ion. Carbon ions are heavier than protons and give a better result in treating deep cancer tissues because carbon ions have a narrower Bragg peak. Alpha particles are nuclei of ordinary helium atoms which like alpha particles consist of two protons and two neutrons. They have the least penetrating power and move at slower velocity than the other types of particulate radiation. They are deflected strongly by a magnetic field and are positively charged. Alpha particles have many uses. Examples are in smoke detectors where the source of alpha particles is americium-241. Polonium-210 is another source of alpha particles that is used to eliminate static in industrial processes. Radium-226 is another source of alpha particles and is used for cancer treatment. Polonium-210 is radiotoxic when ingested because of the high energy alpha particles that enter the body and irradiate cells in the body. Let's look next at a few uncharged particles. These are neutrons which are heavy and neutrinos which are light. We shall look at each next. Neutrons are neutral and slightly heavier than a proton. They are used in cancer therapy for head and neck cancers and also for prostate cancers. Neutrons can be produced by bombarding a beryllium target with protons. When comparing electromagnetic radiations like X-rays and gamma rays to particulate radiations, it is important to remember that electromagnetic radiations are massless photons. Particulate radiations include the smallest particles like electrons and pions and can be as large as argon. Electromagnetic radiations are often used in diagnostic imaging while particles are often used in cancer therapy. Here is a figure I showed last week comparing the penetrating ability of various particles and radiations. Heavy charged particles like alphas are least penetrating, while heavy neutral particles like neutrons are most penetrating. Between the penetrating ability of heavy charged particles and heavy neutral particles, 
we have the electromagnetic radiations like X-rays and gamma rays. Let's answer a few questions to finish up. First question, which of these is not a characteristic of electromagnetic waves? The choices are A, travels at 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. B, deflected by a strong magnetic field. C, is a transverse wave. D, travels in straight lines. The correct answer is B, deflected by a strong magnetic field. Deflection by a strong magnetic field is not a characteristic of electromagnetic waves. Next question, a CT scanner in the radiology department uses X-rays to form images. Which of these is correct about X-rays? A, travel at 3000 meters per second from target to detector. B, should be protected from magnetic fields from the MRI scanner. C, have longer wavelengths than radio waves. And D, have higher energy than radio waves. The correct answer is D, have higher energy than radio waves. Next question, based on what you know about the penetrability of particulate radiation, which of these particles is least penetrating? A, neutrons, B, alpha particles, C, beta particles, D, x-rays. The correct answer is B, alpha particles. This is the last slide, so this is the end of the presentation. Thank you for watching this presentation.